welcome to the inaugural episode of the speaker series from NSA's Cybersecurity Collaboration Center. I'm Josiah Dykstra. The Collaboration Center is the intersection of public partnership and cybersecurity for NSA. The speaker series is our opportunity to bring NSA experts to share their experiences, their expertise, and their technical contributions uh, to the general public. With me today is Lieutenant Zachary Danley. Lieutenant Danley has been studying protective DNS and is here to tell us about that technology. He is also the co-author of a cybersecurity information sheet recently published on our website, nsa.gov slash cybersecurity. Welcome, Lieutenant Danley. Thank you very much for having me. I, I realize that we are a little bit distanced uh, today, but wanting to make sure that everybody is safe, even between the two of us. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Can you begin by telling us at sort of a high level, how did we get here? What is the goal of protective DNS as a, as a technology and how does it help defend the, the Department of Defense and the defense industrial base? Absolutely, so whenever we as the NSA's Cybersecurity Collaboration Center first looked at things we were able to do in that protection of DOD, NSS, and the defense industrial base, the DIB, we wanted to look at ways to provide solutions that were very scalable, that were easy to implement, and that provided strong cybersecurity benefit. And when we looked at these, we took some cues from our great partners in the UK at the National Cybersecurity Center, who had already been looking into these sort of solutions. And one of those, protective DNS, or PDNS, was what sort of bubbled to the top of those that met that criteria of large cybersecurity benefit, low overall business impact whenever we're thinking of working with the DIB, and that very scalable solution given the size of the cybersecurity challenges we're working on preventing. So that's a great high level motivation. I think that fits nicely with the goals of the cybersecurity directorate here at NSA. Um, and our need to defend the nation and help with cybersecurity for the defense industrial base as well. Absolutely. So give me a little more detail. How does DNS work? How does protective DNS work? What does that security provide? Sure, happy to. So DNS, or the domain name system, is what does the translation of google.com into an IP address or the physical location of where that information that'll serve in this case, that website exists. It is a core underpinning of the way the modern internet works, such that a user doesn't have to remember this long numerical address, but rather can just type in google.com. Additionally, google.com may exist in a lot of different places, so it helps the user get to the one that's best able to serve their needs. With all of that, adversaries and malicious cyber actors also use DNS for similar purposes and abuse the protocol for other nefarious reasons. With these two things, what PDNS does is offer that protective overarching layer to those DNS queries from an organization that are looking to do those translations and does a couple things. It makes sure that whatever that translation is happening isn't going to a known malicious site. It can also look at those translations and those queries and see if any seem suspicious. And more advanced solutions that have machine learning, data analytics, or algorithm, algorithmic ways in which to determine potential malicious domains can begin to get ahead of that, not only just blocking known bad, but flagging and identifying those that are behaving in potentially a malicious way. So it helps for all of those queries of doing the domains to the IP addresses, provides that shroud of protection around them, making sure that those that are happening aren't going to malicious or suspected malicious sites. So that's a powerful capability and one that seems like it fits very nicely into the ecosystem of cyber protections. I understand that you also did a pilot with real companies and you really deployed this looking for real bad traffic. Tell us how did that pilot go and what did you find? So beyond just exploring it as a solution in and of itself, we also wanted to see what it looked like implementing it and in a collaborative way of us as the NSA along with other DOD partners, the DOD Cyber Crime Center, being able to see how providing this solution and collaborating on the data and analysis of that cybersecurity solution could best help affect the security of the defense industrial base of the DIB. And so what we did was we, working with those DOD partners, identified five different small to medium-sized DIB entities and provided this PDNS solution from a commercial provider for six months. And over that six months, we worked hand-in-hand -hand with industry to analyze those identified malicious domains, those suspected domains, and even work on some of that analysis of what may constitute 
a potentially malicious domains, as we mentioned from sort of that machine learning side. And across this whole pilot, we were actually able to look into almost 4 billion potential DNS queries. And we had some really exciting results that sort of came from that. So tell me a little bit more in detail. Like, did you actually find bad traffic? And were these companies safer as a result of this technology? So as I mentioned, there were about 4 billion DNS queries over the six months. And depending on what size user you are, that could seem like a ton or not so many. But the real key is how scalable it was. So over these 4 billion queries, which are coming out of these five entities, almost 3,500 unique malicious domains are identified. Mm. And because of the nature of DNS, and even if you just think of a single consumer's use of DNS, I probably go to google.com maybe 20 times a day. So even though it was 35, only 3,500 unique malicious domains, that scales up to about 16 potentially malicious connections. Because these connections are happening many times per day, or this malware could be using the same domain across lots of different pieces of the network. And so that scalability and how big DNS grows to is one of the reasons why it is such a foundational thing to protect. And across all of these different entities, there were two really good use cases where we identified using PDNS malicious domains. We could use the logging functions, which is another ancillary benefit of PDNS, to find the computers where those domains requests and queries were coming from, mm -hmm. then actually work with DoD Cyber Crime Center and the entities themselves to remove that malware from the network. So it was that full life cycle of stopping the bad traffic in the moment, using the logs to identify where it came from, then actually working with our industry and DoD partners to go to the entity and remove the malware. And that's really one of the biggest added benefits of PDNS is a foundational piece to work all the way through that cycle. And it's not just from malicious uh, user where to type in a malicious domain. DNS happens in the background of spear phishing emails. It happens as a core feature of malware on a network. So not only across a breadth of potential cyber vulnerabilities and attack vectors, but also across the breadth of the attack lifecycle itself, that sort of kill chain. Both of those features make it a great overarching security solution. Obviously, I would love if there was no malicious traffic that you found at all, but, <laughs> right, and, and the networks were perfectly secure, but we know in real life is there are, there's just malicious things out there, and I'm glad right. that you helped to find them. In this pilot, there was clearly a role for the government and for industry in providing the, the protective DNS service to these companies. Can you say a little bit more about how you thought about that collaboration and how did the government play its role and how did industry uh, provide its services? Absolutely, so a key feature of what we do as the NSA Cybersecurity Collaboration Center is work with those industry partners. And the key reason for that is in cyberspace, one of the most important things you can have is that context and is that vantage point. And whenever we think about malicious cyber actors on the DOD side, whenever we as the NSA look to protect DOD, one of the key things we do is go work with DOD networks because that's where the adversary is. Mm -hmm. Well, same thing for the DIB. You have to be able to work with those DIB entities on their networks, looking at their data, because that's where the adversary is. So this pilot allowed us a very tangible focal point to do that, and that was on DNS potential adversaries and potential negative things we'd seen in the data. And so what we were able to do is work with those entities, go to where they had the vantage point, and help bring with us some of our expertise, some of our past experience. And what the collaboration looked like was if a DIB entity were to say, using PDNS, we identified a potentially suspected malicious site, we could collaborate with other DoD partners and with our own internal knowledge and be able to say yes or no, or let's look more, or in the case of where we found the malware, how do we remove it? So it was really that partnership of gaining the vantage point and working with those entities that we're working towards for that cybersecurity solution where the problems exist. And in this case, it was specifically working with the DIB to eradicate those threats that were there. I think this is a really exciting example of that partnership and collaboration mm. between the two. One other thing that I like, I find really exciting about protective DNS is that it happens kind of automatically behind the scenes. Um, there's not a lot of burden on the user. I worry a lot of that users have to make a lot of security decisions that they're uncomfortable or unknowledgeable about. How did that play into your design of this? And did you find that that was true, that it was a low burden on the end user? 
So it's a great question, Josiah, and it was actually a key feature in the solutions we initially looked at. Because the irony is, of course, in cyberspace, the best way is to turn off all the computers, <laughs> put them in boxes, and throw them in the ocean. But that's just not possible with the need for the business. And in this case, whenever you look at our DIB partners, they are a critical partner to the DoD to provide us services and capabilities. So if we were to just tell all DIB entities, turn off your computers, we, as the DoD, would lose huge capability. So a key feature of what we considered was what are the solutions that are easiest to implement seamlessly, both to business practice and that don't offer a big burden to the end user. And that's a great thing about focusing on DNS, is already to the end user, it happens quite seamlessly. So these resolutions and these queries happen hundreds and hundreds of times a day, but the end user doesn't see them. In that same way, DNS is just currently served from these DNS resolvers, as they're called, and they just get bigger and bigger. So if I ask a question, where is x.com, it'll continue to look till one of these resolvers has the answer. All you do in a protective DNS case is point those resolvers to these that are being watched over for those potential malicious connections. And that happens completely seamlessly to the end user and from an IT administrator's perspective is a low burden to initially plug in or turn on. So both of those features were a key consideration in order to not impose a large burden to get the large cyber benefit. In your description of protective DNS, all, it sounds like a lot of very positive attributes, and I think that's terrific. That's a great reason to pick it. We also know that there is no one solution in cybersecurity. Can you talk a little bit about how this fits into the sort of general context that we think about for the Department of Defense, and what are you thinking about next? What else can supplement this? You're very, very right, and I think that is a key thing to understand whenever you implement any cybersecurity solution is that it should just be a piece of an overarching architecture or defense in depth, a layered approach. And whenever you look at PDNS, one of the things it offers is a great foundational base. But it's only looking at that small thread of traffic that is DNS query traffic. You would want to augment as available, business practice allows, this with things like firewall, host based protection, maybe focused email protection, things that additionally offer vantage points, context, and have the ability to work well in concert together. And that's a great thing about PDNS is it's a good foundational solution that can integrate very seamlessly with other solutions. And it should be looked at in that context of how do we implement everything we can to draw down that cybersecurity risk. And this is one piece of that puzzle. And whenever we were investigating it, we looked at other solutions as well. And I think our exploration of those other solutions in concert with this one helped to provide that robust protection of multiple vantage points trying to prevent multiple potential threat actors. Last question, how can a small business mm -hmm. or an average citizen, how can my parents who might be convinced that this is a great technology that it will protect them too, what can they do? Are there commercial solutions? Are there free solutions that they can adopt to get the same benefits of protective DNS that you got at a large scale? Absolutely, so what we did focus on commercial implementation of PDNS, it is absolutely something that a small business or even a home user's network could benefit from. And there are solutions that are very scalable. Some of the solutions we even looked at can be provided to an end user for as little as $4 per user per year. So it's very accessible financially, even for very small institutions. And then beyond that, there are lots of these sort of re resolvers or protective DNS capabilities that a personal user could leverage. And again, the key is instead of pointing my DNS or pointing these questions to just any place, you can point them to those places that will do some sort of that overwatch capability. And that's really the key is whenever you look at it, any user of networks should be thinking about DNS as something to consider. And even in some internet service provider packages or ISP packages, it could watch DNS as a feature. So the real key is it's something all the way to the largest enterprise down to even a home network that could benefit from some vantage point on. And solutions exist across the spectrum from free to integrated to some of the standalone enterprise solutions we looked at. Lieutenant Danley, thank you for that explanation. I think it helps illustrate the great work that the cybersecurity directorate is doing that NSA does to help defend the, defend the nation in, in cybersecurity. That's all the time that we have for today. Please be sure to watch NSA's Twitter feed at NSA Cyber for the announcement of future talks, and we look forward to seeing you next time.